So that being said, um, the average person goes through about three traumatic events in his life. So that's crazy car wreck, somebody dies right in front of you, um, somebody breaks in your house. There's about, average person has about three. The average police officer goes, um, depending on where you work, but if you're, if you're working in a, in a major metropolitan area or even a, a medium size, which is what Chattanooga is, um, you're gonna, I mean, after a 25 year career, I think you're up to like 3,000. It's some ridiculously high number. Um, so we, we constantly see this stuff. So you know, I've personally responded to events like this and I've used this material on people. Um, so, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not some kind of crazy expert on, you know, this, this, this. I am a police officer who has responded, and I know how cops are going to respond to stuff like this. My whole goal uh, with this entire presentation is to try to extend the amount, try to extend the, the, as much life as we have here. What I'm saying is trying to keep the most amount of people alive if something like this were to happen. Um, and that's going to encompass two different things. That's going to be eliminating whatever threat is coming and caring for the wounded. So um, does it, before we get going, any questions as to the background? OK. Um, so in a mass casualty event, so this doesn't have to necessarily be um, an active shooter or uh, it, it, it can be a lot of other things. A bomb could go off. Um, someone could drive their car through the church and hit like 18 people. It, I mean, all kinds of mass casualty events can happen. So that's why we, we're getting away from the term active shooter and moving to mass casualty. Because the fact of the matter is there's all kinds of weird stuff that can happen that doesn't necessarily involve a gun. Um, but in those kind of events, for the purposes of, the, of this presentation, there are three kinds of people. There are dead people, you're gonna live people, and almost dead people, okay? So dead people, unfortunately, are dead. Um, on, what that means is when an event like this happens, they are dead on sight. They, there's, we're not bringing them back, they're gone. Um, so someone would walk in here with an AK-47 and start popping rounds off. If someone takes five rounds to the head, they're not walking away from that. It doesn't matter what you do. You take five rounds of, of, uh, of uh, 762 to the head, you're done. Um, so unfortunately, in, in the three to five minutes that we're waiting on police officers to respond, we, un unless they've got any kind of pulse or something, we're not concerned about those people. I hate to break it to you, but that's, that's where we are, right? Uh, we're trying to preserve the people that are gonna live, and if you're not gonna live, then if we're messing around with someone who's not gonna live, then we're not helping other people that are maybe gonna live. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Uh, will live people. So just because you got hit uh, with a bullet doesn't mean you're gonna bleed out right then and there. Um, so we had a police officer two days ago got shot, um, and he got shot here, so a little bit of skin, he got shot up in his forearm, and then he got shot um, on the back end of his, his forearm as well. Nothing hit bone, um, there, was some, uh, there was some bleeding, but he wasn't hemorrhaging blood, okay? For the next 10 minutes, that person was gonna live, okay? Without any treatment, because um, it's, it's some bad bleeding, but it's not, uh, it's not hemorrhaging, okay? What we are concerned with is hemorrhaging blood. Um, that is gonna be our, for the first part of this presentation, that's gonna be um, our focus. Someone who is an adult who is hemorrhaging blood is, takes about three minutes, well, the two to four minutes to bleed out and die. Um, so a little bit of background, there are three different kinds of bleeding. Um, there's capillary bleeding, which is you get a mosquito bite, and you scratch it, and you're bleeding a little bit. That's capillary bleeding. It's very light blood. It's not pulsating. It's just falling off. Like it's, you know, it's, it's just a little cut, all right? Um, there's venous bleeding. So what that means is you've hit a vein, comes from, comes from the vein, 
Um, and you're, you're leaking blood, you're probably going to need stitches, but you're not hemorrhaging. Hemorrhaging is the arterial bleeding that is coming out of your veins and is spurting out everywhere, okay? The difference between venial, venal bleeding and, hemorrh and hemorrhaging is you hit an artery when you're hemorrhaging and just blood's just flowing out of you. Um, that's the kind of bleeding that we are concerned with. That's the kind of stuff that we can stop. Uh, with very basic tools, that's what we can take care of. Um, so no matter who you are, if you can pick something up and pull something, you can save somebody's life from hemorrhaging blood. So that's what we're going to be concerned with the whole medical side of this presentation. Um, in, in the United States, it takes an average of three minutes for a police officer to respond to a mass casualty event. Uh, that is the best time in the world, and it's not close. Police, the, the U.S. has, um, you know, we've got all kinds of problems with our police, but one of the things that we're good at is the police are all over our communities, and so we have a really quick response time, stuff like this. Um, but in order for the police to secure the scene and start doing, uh, have fire come in, an EMS come in, and start act, treating people that are, are wounded, it's going to take about 10 minutes someone, for someone who is hemorrhaging blood to get to an ambulance. If you're hemorrhaging blood bad and you're not being treated, you're not going to make it. Um, so, but our church here has purchased some material for us to learn and teach you. We're, I'm going to teach you all, and some people who may have more experience with this, are going to, we're going to help each other out um, so that hopefully we can save each other if something like this were to happen. Okay? Because uh, the fact of the matter is, not everyone here feels comfortable with a gun. I get it. Not everyone needs to have a gun. <laughs> um, but when, but everyone here can put a tourniquet on somebody, put a chest seal on somebody, pack a wound. Um, that's no matter who you are, you can do that. Um, so before we get going into what we're actually the, the practical section of this. Um, I want to talk about something called the sympathetic nervous system. So, do you all remember I talked about having a, um, a traumatic event? Um, the sympathetic nervous system is that, um, there's a lot of different ways to describe it, but it is the, is the way that the human body reacts when is, its life is threatened. Um, so what that means is your, your quote unquote, your frontal, your frontal cortex shuts off and you're going into animal brain. Um, everyone, if we have an act shooter or a mass casualty event in here, everyone's going to do that. It doesn't matter how old you are, unless you're an infant, something like, something like that is going gonna, is gonna to happen in your brain. Um, and so what you get good at is you get good at really big, we call big movements. So you get good at running quick and picking stuff up. You get really bad at very small, minute movements. Um, so what we have done is I have done my best to make sure that with everything that we're doing, we're not, we're not fumbling around with stuff in our fingers. We're just grabbing something and we're violently or forcefully, however you want to say it, moving this thing. Okay? Um, because you're going to be good at making big actions with a lot of force. That's in, so, so that being said, if you think that... Um, that like you can do, real, this is why um, like you see police officers, if you, if you ever watch any good body camera footage and they're, they, you know, they, they, they expend a magazine, they shoot you know, somebody 17 times around bullets. Uh, this is why it's really hard. Um, you'll see a police officer who takes a magazine and tries to put it back in the gun, he'll do like, he'll like fumble around and, and it, it takes a long time for the magazine to go into the gun because your brain is, is just, it's trying to figure out what it needs to do, and so it's not, it's not thinking, um, and so the only, only way to, to train out of that is to train over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, so the good police officers are gonna do, are gonna, with all the gear they have, they're gonna at least practice with it. Um, just here or there, they're gonna, I mean, I'm sure Ken um, has many times you know, unloaded his gun and just practiced magazine changes. Um, <laughs> And just drop, and because you need, you need stuff like that, you have to train out of because your your fingers are so small when you grab a magazine. 
Um, but this kind of stuff, this is not, we're not really concerned with that. This is, this, all this is very easy movements that we can do um, to each other. Is everybody tracking? Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is um, before we get started, um, we are going to be putting medical supplies on each other. I have training medical supplies for this. We have bought specifically for training. Um, you're not going to hurt each other. This is just, I need everyone to practice with it because, every, because there's three different kinds of learners. There's auditory visual and there's kinesthetic and everyone needs to know how to, everyone needs to do this in case we actually have to do this. Um, so that being said, if you are carrying an actual firearm on you, we are going to be, um, like right now, if you are, we're gonna be um, laid out on the ground, on the pews, whatever. Um, if, when we do train like this as cops, normally we'll go put those guns away just because we don't need a gun falling down um, and then going off or something crazy happening. Uh, Jeremy has a safe open that we can put firearms away. If you have a gun, and I'm asking you, I'm not making you put the gun up, but I'd like for you to go put that up. So we can go ahead and do that now. Um, if you've got an actual gun on you. Um, but other than that, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna get going on, putting on medical supplies. And just in case something else were to happen in this church right now, I am armed, so I'll, I'll handle it. We got it. So. All right, um, I'd like to make four groups. Um, I'm not gonna number, well actually, you know what? We'll number people off. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, ones, twos, threes, fours. I want people to mix up because you don't know who you're gonna be doing this on if something like this were to happen. Take a seat in your pews together. Jared. Sure. All right, so now that we're all mixed up, I know how much adults love doing this. Um, so but we're doing this because um, you don't know who you're going to be helping out in church. And so we're just going to get familiar with, uh, with putting this kind of stuff on trainers, right? 
Um, so we there are three different kinds of medical supplies that we have in here. Um, because there are three different places that you're going to hemorrhage from your body. Um, so, Jared, you're going to be my dummy, okay? So just turn this way, put your arms out. All right, so the first part is what's called extremities. So that's going to be your arms all the way up to about a couple inches from your shoulder. Same way on your other arm. And then um, your legs almost up to your groin, about a couple inches away from hitting your torso, um, down. So this down to your foot, this down to your, to your hand. Um, if someone is hemorrhaging from that part of their body, so you know this end of the arm, this end of the leg, um, the, then the way that you're gonna treat a hemorrhaging wound is with a tourniquet. So a tourniquet, is this thing. Who here has seen a tourniquet before? Okay, so um, these are training tourniquets. The church has purchased some, of, we're gonna do this again, um, maybe in a couple years or a year or whatever. Um, so these are meant to be used over and over. These are not the tourniquets that the church has in case something like this were to actually happen. We're not gonna be using the supplies that the church actually has supplied for us. These are specifically meant for training. So we can use these on people, feel free to crank them down, but don't hurt each other. Please don't hurt each other. Um, so I'm gonna pass these out. got more and don't unwrap them yet I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you all how I have them folded so all the tourniquets in all these bags I have folded they're all folded the same way and we're all gonna learn how to fold them uh, just pass it one two three Okay, so this is how I've wrapped tourniquets and I've used tourniquets from this um, because we're all, all we are trying to do is create the least amount of movement possible. We want big movements. We don't want small little movements to like be pulling on stuff and unraveling a tourniquet. There's two different ways to, to, uh, to wrap a tourniquet. I wrap them this way because it's really easy. So what you do is if both your hands are operational, you take the back end of the tourniquet. Does everybody see this? The back end of the tourniquet, grab it. Okay? Front end of the tourniquet. You should have a little piece hanging right here in the middle. Does everybody see this? Take your other hand and grab the front piece. So you should have a little piece hanging in the middle. Pull. Okay. This is decently big enough for someone's leg. Um, you can unwrap these more, but the Velcro starts interlacing with each other and it makes it a little bit harder um, to wrap up. But these are really easy. Whatever extremity is, um, is bleeding, you take that extremity and you put it through the extremity. Okay? So find someone next to you, take their arm, put it through their arm. Okay, high and tight. You want to get all the way. You want to get all the way up to their shoulder. Okay, does everybody have a tourniquet? Like I've got on somebody. Okay, so what you do is, you see this red tab? Pull. Okay. Now, what you're supposed to do is crank. We're not going to crank all the way. Okay, so we're going to crank it down. So pull it, but don't like really crank it, okay? Then you take the back part and you put the Velcro back where they have Velcro to wrap up. Does everybody see this? The Velcro 
straps back onto itself. So, and then the last part is you would take the windlass, this little stick thing right here, and turn. You'd stick the windlass in here. This has a little time, or this little tab right here to write down the time you put a turn on somebody. But the fact of the matter is, in this kind of event, we don't have pins in here. Um, so well, we're going to, so, but uh, where's our paramedic, or paramedic? What we're concerned about with tourniquets is not necessarily like we're going to have about a 10 minute window with these tourniquets. It's not like we're putting a tourniquet on and waiting three hours. Okay. If we're waiting three hours. Okay. Probably going to write time down, but this kind of event, we don't be wor worried about exactly what time put a tourniquet for somebody. Um, so if you're actually applying this to somebody, you're going to crank it down. It's going to hurt. It's not fun. I've done it to people. I've had to hold people down and say, hey, this is not fun. This is going to hurt. The, you know, they're, they're sitting there yelling at you. They've been shot, you know, whatever. It's, it's not fun, okay? But you're going to crank it down as much as you can, all right? And then you're going to turn this windlass as much as you can. What happens if you crank a tourniquet on someone and they're still hemorrhaging blood. They're st you still see blood flowing. Does anybody know? You crank it more. What if you crank it more and it's still hemorrhaging blood, you can't get it any tighter? You put another tourniquet on. Um, you're going to find that a lot with legs, with men or women that have muscular legs. It, you're going to want a couple tourniquets. A couple more things about legs. Um, so if I were... Jerry, come in here. Just lift your foot up. So I, if Jared were to be shot right here in the leg, right? I don't want to crank down the tourniquet unless... I get everything out of his pockets. You don't want anything between the clothes and the tourniquet. Even better, we have medical shears. I, you know, oh well, nudity, cut, cut their clothes off. It's okay. Like we're, we're trying to save somebody's life. You'll be okay. Um, so, and then you would, same thing with the leg. You literally just crank down. Throw the little Velcro on, and then turn the windlass. I'm not going to crank it more than once, but that's how to put it on a leg. If someone would actually be shot, they're not going to be standing up and be laying down. Okay. So I would like everyone to put a tourniquet on somebody, but please don't crank them down too hard. Okay. I don't want to send anybody to the hospital. Today. Do it. A couple hours. Does anybody have any questions as we're doing this? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So you don't want to be on the you don't want to be on the ball on their shoulder. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. You only have one year group, or you have two year. You have one.
Does anybody have any questions? Justified in your uh, everyday tourniquet carry now? Yeah. 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 I'm going to pass out our next supplies. Do not open these. Don't open them. concern about well so if they're hemorrhaging blood yeah no you don't if they're just like leaking blood and it's not like spraying everywhere plug it but if it's spraying blood then you're yeah that's when you're better yeah Has everybody had the opportunity to put a tourniquet on somebody? Yes? Going once, twice, three times, sold. Okay, so we need somebody else. All right, so we now know what to do if someone's bleeding from their extremities, okay? But what if they're bleeding from a joint? It's really hard to get a tourniquet around somebody's torso. Please don't put a tourniquet on somebody's neck. Don't do it. Um, now, it's a funny story. Uh, <laughs> what my, uh, my very first week out, I responded to a dude who got his uh, foot chopped off, and so I put a tourniquet on his, uh, on his leg. And uh, apparently when I said tourniquet applied to the leg, it sounded like a tourniquet applied to the neck. And so uh, a bunch of other police officers started showing up, started yelling at me, and they were like, "What are you doing?" But they weren't saying, "What are you doing?" That they were saying other stuff. But uh, but, they, but, they, but but they were they were saying, you know, "What are you doing? Put a dirt can on somebody's neck!" Oh my gosh! And they're like, "Oh, so because it, yeah, that was a crazy call." Um, but anyways, um, that wasn't the worst thing that happened to that guy. Um, all right, so but we're gonna address what to do if someone is hemorrhaging blood from a joint. The only time you're gonna be hemorrhaging blood from a joint is probably if you're shot or if you get blown up. Um, so there's two options here. The first option is someone's been shot through a joint. So there's something that's, got, that's gone through their joints. The joints being shoulder area down to um, your torso area under the belly button, okay? Um, so what you're going to do is what's called pack and seal, right? We have wound packing gauze and we have Israeli wraps to seal. Um, this, these things are probably the most complicated things that we're going to be doing and they're not that complicated. So, um, 
going to pass out our gauze. So also, don't open these up yet. But in order to pack somebody's joint, you're going to need an Israeli wrap and you're going to need the gauze. Can't do one without the other. Take another. Okay. So, for the gauze, so somebody shot in, in here on, on, in their joints, these are sealed twice. Okay. So, once again, the real medical supplies we have, don't go opening these up. These are sealed because they need to stay dry and they need to stay sanitary. If something like this were to happen, it ain't going to be that sanitary, sanitary. But it's more sanitary if we don't open these up than if we do. So this is really easy to rip open. So everyone who's got these, rip open, go and rip it open. If that side doesn't work, there's also an indentation on the other side if you need to. Now if you like, I for some reason have really bad sensory problems with cloth. So this gives me the heebie-jeebies, but um, all you're looking for is this really dry, chalky piece of cloth. So the wrap comes off, you don't need this thing, you don't need the plastic, throw it away, plastic's all done, okay? So, you're gonna see, on, and if, you're, if you have the, um, the demonstration, one, turn around so that your group can see you, because we, we don't have 18 of these to give out. Um, you're gonna see a tab, at the bottom, there's going to be some kind of tab. Everybody see that? So the, 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 uh, the red thing can go away, you can throw the red thing away. The, uh, there's going to be a tab near the bottom of these. Does everybody see this little tab? It's just like a little piece of cloth hanging out. You're going to pull, and it's just going to unwrap this. Okay? It's going to unwrap, unwrap. Unwrap, 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 unwrap. You're gonna wanna get an end of it. So, so everyone, you want to unwrap to one end. Other end's fine, you can leave it. Um, so what you do is you take the end of it, and then we're gonna use our demonstration right here. We're gonna say you got shot in the, um, in the shoulder, okay? This is gross. But it is what it is. You're going to take your finger and you're going to, wherever this person's been shot in the chest, you take your finger, you find the bullet hole, you find exactly where it's arterial bleeding, you find where all the blood's pouring out, you take your finger and you plug the, the, uh, the wound with your finger. Okay? Not fun. This is going to hurt. They're going to complain. You're saving their life. Um, so we're, we're going to say he got shot here and it's spilling out. So I take my finger and I plug, okay? If he's actually shot, my, my finger is inside of his shoulder. Does everybody understand this? Okay. You take the wound packing gauze with your other finger, with your hand, and you replace your finger with the gauze. This is going to soak up blood. It's going to get all nasty, but you're going to continue to replace the, uh, the, the wound. You're essentially going to pack the wound all the way up with this gauze. We don't have scissors here uh, that we're going to use to cut these up. You can stick the whole thing in. It's okay. Will, yes. Are you actually are you pushing the gauze? Yes, you are, you are pushing it into the wound. You, you, you want to plug up wherever this is bleeding out. You, so you're, 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 I'm putting pressure on him. Um, so I'm, I'm literally, like, I'm grabbing a shoulder, right? Um, you're essentially, you want to put pressure on it and replace the, uh, you want to put the gauze where there's blood pouring out. And I'm, you're, you're actually pushing into it. <laughs> um, so if he was actually shot, all of this would be inside of him. Because this stuff is going to soak up blood like crazy. And so it's going to condense down. So you're going to pack it. You're going to pack it. That's, that's wound packing. Yeah. So 
That's, so um, this is not going to work with you standing up. Um, so go ahead and lay down. So if you can't see, go ahead and stand up. Come on over here. So we're going to say we've packed them. Uh, for demonstration purposes, we've got someone here. Uh, Ma'am, come on over here. Come here. Come here. No, you come, come here. Yeah, come here. Uh, I want you to just hold pressure on, okay? So these, these are done a lot easy, more easily with two people. If we were to have an event like this, you're probably going to have more people that are not wounded than people who are wounded, um, especially with Ken in the building. Um, and so what's going to happen is the second thing that we have are these Israeli wraps. Does, it, the, uh, does everybody see the... Uh, does, there, does everybody see the... Uh, these Israeli wraps. This, this is part two of this demonstration. So what we'll do is take the wrap, open it up, And once again, the, the ones that we have are going to be sealed because we want to keep them dry and we want to keep them sanitary. Well, yeah. does it say daily wrap or what does it actually say? Isra Israeli wrap. Israeli. 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 Yeah. yeah. And that's what it says. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you all a tour of these before we get done. So then, you see the little red tab right here? Rip. Okay. So then this also is going to, so you can just let it fall out. Um, the other option is, so what you do is this person who's holding the, um, the wound down, you take this white portion right here, and you stick it on top. Go and take your hand. You stick it on top. Okay. So then we're gonna sit him up. Sit up. <laughs> and we're gonna wrap around. Okay. This little fabric goes into the hole right here. Does everybody see that? Okay. If you can't see it, come up here. So, white portion, you find a way to get a lot of pressure, so you wrap it around them. This wrap goes through here. We keep going. What if you can't sit them up? You just pick them up, you get, you get more than one person to lift them up. Um, And then you're going to want to stretch it real tight. So this won't suffocate them, but we can just, we can do this. Yeah. So then you put this over it. So that this is wrapped through here multiple times. And you can, I, you can, what you can do is just take this end of it and find a, another portion of the wrap and take these little hooks and hook it back into the wrap. That's going to maintain pressure so that we don't have to keep holding pressure on him. Did you feel the pressure right here? Because it's push, push, pushing into you, right? So these are, I t once again, they're pretty complicated. I know I, it, in the police academy, it took me a long time to figure out how these worked. Um, but in an event like this, you can't beat an Israeli rap when it comes to keeping pressure on someone. Um, so we're gonna do these on each other. Um, Feel free to have more than one person participate because if you're getting your wound packing someone, you're probably not doing it by yourself. You're going to have other people help you in the church. 
it, it, whatever you what, whatever you can do to, to yeah, as long as you get something around it. Um, if I if I were, I mean, heck, if, if like one person got shot and we put a tourniquet on them, and then you want to pack that wound itself, if you're on the extremity, you can just pack it right here, right? Um, but these are these. This is the best way to plug up a joint. Okay. If yeah, 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 and, and if yes, but in the event someone's hemorrhaging, you want to put tourniquets on people that are hemorrhaging from extremities first. Also, first, you want to get the if someone's hemorrhaging out of a out of a joint, you want to get that taken care of. That's also that's more priority than an already plugged up wound on somebody's arm. Does that make sense? Everybody get that? Okay. Um, so the the packing itself is going to condense. It's going to condense way down when you okay. when you when you get liquid on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we do have in our medical bags. We also have shears. Um, you can cut it if you need to. So um, and don't cut the wrap. Cut the cut the wound packing, um, but for a good wound, that's going to fill it up. If you may need to, um, because you, and you you continue you continue to pack the wound until you're not seeing any more blood rushing out. Um, it's just you're just going to fill it up as much as you can until you can't fit any more in there. It, you cannot put too much in there. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so, if a so if a bullet, um, especially in a joint, because joints are bony, um, you're going to get shattered everything. Like you're going to get muscles, tendons, whatever shattered up. Um, so there's probably going to still be a good something for you to pack. Um, just plug the hole. If the plug, I mean, if the hole goes through, just fill the whole thing up. Um, you, what, your whole goal is to stop the bleeding here. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I know it's going to be a little bit harder to put um, wrap and is, Israeli or put wound packing and Israeli wraps on each other. Um, I'd like for everyone to do it, but if not everyone feels comfortable doing it, it's okay. Um, and I'll be coming around if you have questions, and I can help show y'all how to put these on. So you have um, you have uh, gauze, and you have an Israeli wrap. So y'all feel free to start packing. And you can either pack somebody's wound on their shoulder, or you can pack a wound on their torso, um, to under the belly button. Do it. No. Well, you, first, first we want to, we just want the turn. We just want the turn again. That's the, that's the uh, that's the that's the concern. So if, if it's if it's if it's spewing out blood, it's our trail point. So if it's just if it's not spewing out blood, then I mean you still want to pack it, but uh, but it's not like it's. If someone's, the definition of an arterial hemorrhaging is you hit an artery and it's spewing out blood, all right? So that's what you're concerned about. Yeah. This is, this is also for arterial hemorrhaging. So a tourniquet, it, it, it all, this is the same treatment, this is the same kind, for different parts of the body. Does that make sense? So, 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 if you pack something that should have a tourniquet, you're not wrong. If you put a tourniquet on something that should have a, a bone pack, you, you may mess that up. Like, but um, I mean, you, you can never you can never go wrong doing both. Um, you know. I've got one more wrap. If someone wants to use it here. Yeah. We have chest seals. We, we have chest seals for sucking chest wounds.
I've got one more wrap. Y'all, so y'all want to practice that? Yeah. All right. All right. So. Want to get that to lay down right here? But no, no, you're good. You're good. You, 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 you would just you want this thing. You want this thing laying down, and then you, yeah, and then you can just take some of the wrap and wrap it back in there. Hmm. Yeah. No. 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 Or you can um, you can also go the other way if you wanted to, but wrapping it back on itself is better. So, uh, yep. Yep. You got a question? I mean, if it keeps pressure, I, it's, it's it's yeah. Because we don't have an actual wound, it's going to be hard to have gauze inside of him. So, but if you're, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of off here. I mean, I'll, I'll wrap it. No, but I mean, it's what else do you? I mean, that's the thing you're most familiar with. So, yeah, Citadel would be better than Rocket Knight. Right? Uh, you can, you can put whatever keeps pressure, whatever just depends. It, it can be, uh, yeah, it, it can, it, whatever keeps pressure, that's all we're concerned about. For, for up here, that's we have, we have something different. We have a different treatment. So, okay. so let's just say that that's enough packing here because we don't have an actual wound. So then, so then we just throw this thing on. Um, go around. Yeah, it actually is better if you hold it. Hopefully, you'd be doing that if you get shot.
90% divorce rate. Has everybody had the opportunity to, to use this rally wrap? Yes? Okay, let me get the, uh, let me get the wraps, the tourniquets, and the, and the gauze back. Whenever y'all whenever you, finish over there, get done, and then let me get the stuff back. Thank you, thank you. Do what? Yeah, I will. Thank you. What size shirt do you wear? What size shirt do you wear? What size shirt do you wear? Medium. See if this fits over you. I doubt it, but that's what I got for you. <laughs> Addressed joint wounds, right? Torso, shoulders, we've addressed extremity wounds. What we have left is belly button to your collarbone, and then essentially your bottom vertebrae to about bottom vertebrae up to um, you've got this little bone here that kind of points out and starts your neck, okay? Um, your lungs are bigger. Turn around. Your lungs are bigger than you, than you think they are, um, and so the last kind of wound is what's called a sucking chest wound. Okay, um, what that means is you've been hit in the chest, and it's in, it's impairing your ability to breathe. Um, there is a third kind of treatment for those that we also have. These are easier than the wraps. They're easier than the uh, than tourniquets. They are called. Uh, chest seals. So I have training chest seals here. Um, I won't, and I'm not going to ask y'all to put these on each other because it's going to ruin your clothes. Um, these because they have glue on them. Um, but essentially, I'm going to demonstrate these, and y'all can ask me questions. You got it? Okay. So if someone has a sucking chest a chest wound. They're not going to be standing up. They're going to be laying down. Um, they're, they're gonna, you're going to hear them going, I can't, it, you're going to, you're going to hear the wound itself. You're going to hear a bunch of like blood stirring around in the, uh, in, in the wound. Okay. Um, pr they're probably going into shock. Um, although I did go to a call one time where an 85 year old man shot himself in the chest and he was completely fine. I'm just looking at me. He, he said, officer, I need you to do it again because I missed the first time. 
He was 85 years old and his wife found out he was having an affair. So he was, all right. So, all right. Okay, so we have, we have chest seals. They're gonna look like this. Vented chest seal, they're gonna work about the same way. But these look different because you can't, these are not training. Um, you can't buy training versions of these. I was only to get one training version of a chest seal because I don't need to be wrapping somebody's chest up um, without a training one. You don't wanna be doing that. So these are training chest seals. They work the same way. You rip open the top. You're gonna have contents in here, okay? So what you'll do is they're all gonna come with a piece of gauze, right? Everybody see this little piece of gauze, okay? Someone's got a, a sucking chest wound. There's gonna be some blood pooling around the wound, okay? You're going to take this little baby piece of gauze and you're just gonna, we're gonna say shot right here. You're just gonna wipe as much as you can get away. <clears throat> Throw it away. This is what you're gonna, it's gonna have a little plastic backing. It's gonna work like a sticker, okay? What you're gonna wanna do is take the wound, okay. I'm gonna show y'all. Can everybody see this? Nah, no. Um, I'm gonna come around. So, can everybody see this thing right here? Do you see how it's got this little thing in the middle right here? Wherever the wound is, where you've got a bullet hole between the belly button to the collarbone, you want this thing to go on top of that hole, okay? You don't want the glue, this is glue, you don't want the glue on the hole because you're making things worse. Um, you want this little portion right here where we've got a vent over the, the wound. Does everyone in this group understand that? Does everybody, can everybody in this group see this? Little thing right here, this is where you want the wound to cover. Can everybody see this here? Can everybody see this here? Okay, that's where you want it. So, and, the, and the, the glue on these things is rough, like it, it's gonna stay. Um, so, yeah, you get a free wax that way you're at it. Um, so, you're gonna peel about halfway, see, rough, rough glue. You're gonna peel about halfway, fine, we're gonna say it's right here. You're just gonna stick that over it. Yeah, on their skin. I do not put it on their clothes. Once again, that's why I have scissors. First things first, we're gonna cut their clothes off. Um, and you're gonna seal it, okay? So unless they get hit with uh, like 380 or 22, you're gonna have an exit wound. You're gonna turn around. So you're gonna look for the exit wound, take the other chest seal, and what are you gonna do? The exact same thing. Does somebody want to come here and do it? No volunteers? All right. You're in shower. Say shower too. No, no, we're not. Not doing that. So, wipe it away. Use the red part. Yep, so something to be cognizant about is, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so something to be cognizant about is um, when you apply one of these, um, you're, now this has happened to me, so no shame in the game. Um, you're gonna wanna put one of these things on and if you get the chest seal itself stuck on your fingers, no good chest seal. 
because it's going to stick and it won't stick to them. And you're going to be sitting here trying to get the chest seal off. And then when you grab with your finger, it's going to stick to that finger. And then it's, it's just going to, it's just like holding, you know, some gum. Like it, it's, it's not going to work. Um, and then by the time you get it off your fingers, there's not enough glue on there for it to actually be an effective chest seal. Um, so does everybody understand if someone has a hemorrhaging wound on their extremities, what are we going to use? And if they have it in their joints? Israeli wrap. And if they have it in the chest? Chest seal. Um, what if they get struck in the head? Yeah, probably did. Uh, so, um, we're, if, they, if someone gets hit in the head, um, then, um, I mean, unless they're dead, uh, you're, what you're going to do is you're just, you're not going to pack it, you're just going to wrap it um, with the Israeli wrap. Okay, that's the medical section of this. Does anybody have any questions? Go ahead. So, uh, there, there has been some back and forth about blood clot, uh, like the, using the material, the chemical stuff for it. Do it. Yeah. The, there, so there's been some, some, some back and forth about using quick clot. Um, from what I understand, for some people, it can make it worse, and it just depends on their blood type, or whatever. Um, so I just didn't get any because that stuff is going to be, I mean, it's going to work. It'll be effective. Because um, our goal here is to extend the amount of time someone can live before they get in the ambulance. That's it. We're not doing anything else. Um, so, that being said, um, a couple, some housekeeping for the, uh, for the, um, for the, uh, some, some housekeeping for the, uh, our medical, um, gear itself. You can take a seat. Um, thank you. So we have four medical bags, um, I'm gonna come around. Just keep this. In, just keep this with your group. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give by a tour of these. Take that. So these are our real bags. Don't get stuff out of it. I'm just gonna show you guys what is where in these bags. Okay. Like that. Like that. Yeah. No problem. Um, all right. So. I'll demonstrate this one for this group, but if y'all want to open this up as I'm doing this, don't get things out. I'm just going to show y'all where everything is, okay? If you're in a group and you can't really see, just go and take a look. So in the middle, you undo the zipper, and we have wound packing material in the middle, and we've also got Israeli wrap. I think it's uh, six and six. It's either, um, I know there's six is really wrap and there could be six to seven wound packing or the gauze itself in there. In the, I guess looking at it, be the right side of it. The right pouch right here, five tourniquets. Does everybody see that? Five tourniquets right here. They're all wrapped the same way. And then on the left side, we have chest seals, uh, five chest seals, and we have medical shears. Okay, um, if someone gets a wound, so so quick couple things about medical shears. If you if you stab somebody with the scissors, you're making the problem worse. So don't stab somebody with the scissors. And I'm used to talking to cops; they're really dumb. So we, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, which if you're gonna cut clothes off somebody, I'll use that shirt. Come on over here. Put the shirt back on. 
if you're going to cut clothes off somebody and your, ner your sympathetic nervous system is going crazy, don't fool around with trying to get the, you know, we're going to try to grab the bottom and whatever. If someone, so I'm, I'm actually not, I'm not going to cut your actual shirt, but if someone, uh, if someone has a bunch of clothing and you need to get through it, you find wherever the, the seam is at the bottom, just grab and yank, okay? And then you start, okay? I'll let go of that. No, I'm not gonna take that shirt. Um, with medical shears, all you do, take the shirt. Okay, do you see how the bottom of these is parallel to the body? It's not like this. Do not do that, please. Uh, it's going to be parallel, okay? And then you snip. Pulling the shirt, not the person. Does everybody see that? Okay? Does anyone need me to demonstrate that again? Okay. <laughs> Um, in all seriousness, if you feel like you need to practice with medical shears, I have extra clothes. I don't know who's going to fit them, but, um, but these, that's what these are for, is um, especially for a sucking chest wound um, and for the uh, Israeli wrap, we're going to want to expose it. So it's a lot easier to cut clothes off somebody than just take them off of someone, okay? Um, especially in wintertime, people wearing coats and stuff, I'm telling you. Just take their clothing, grab it, yank it, stick the um, stick the, uh, the 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 medical shears in there. Okay, not into the person, please. I've seen that. Um, okay, so you can go ahead and take off that. Have a seat. But yeah, we have medical shears in there, um, and then so go ahead and the. Uh, Put the bags up. Um, I've actually got the zippers in the middle in case someone's like they can't manipulate with one of their with one of their uh, hands. You want the zippers in the middle here, just because so we can have it's easier to open. Um, from what I understand, we're putting two of these in the sanctuary or in the, the nave. We're going to put one out there, in the kind of in the coffee area, and one back towards the nursery. Um, these are not for you get a minor cut. They're not for you get bit by a dog. They're not for Johnny breaks his leg. They are for sucking chest wounds, arterial hem hemorrhaging. Israeli wrap is going to do nothing for a mosquito bite. So do not open these up for something like that. Okay. Um, the church has very graciously bought all this. A lot of this stuff is pretty expensive. So, unless we're at someone hemorrhaging blood and it's spilling everywhere, don't open these up. Does everybody understand this? Um, I'm gonna, I think we're going to try to make, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that announcement be made in, in more politically correct terms <laughs> at, um, at an actual, when we have um, a service. But don't open these up for minor stuff. Okay? These are only for actual real deal life threatening trauma. Everybody understand this? We're okay. A regular, we're a regular first aid. Do what? I don't know where the regular first aid is. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Okay. Um, so before we get going on the other um, I'm not gonna say the other half of this, but the other section of this, if y'all if you're carrying a gun, feel free to go get it back. We're not gonna be manipulating each other anymore. Um, and if we have uh, trash, we'll try to pick the trash up from all the wrappers. Uh, I guess we'll take a little bit of a break. So. Yep. Uh, the uh, I've heard a clip. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna reuse the. Thank you. 
Yeah. <laughs> they have one thing at the end, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm not done yet. We have a little bit left, but yeah, good. We'll get a good idea.
Uh, no, we can say what we want. We're good. You don't need to sit in your groups. We're, um, this is going to take 10, 15 minutes. And we'll get y'all out of here. So I want to talk about a couple things um, responding to something, an event like this. Um, so the, the first thing is, right now, have y'all heard of the, the run, hide, fight thing from the FBI? Everybody's heard of run, hide, fight, kind of. Okay, so now um, there's, a, there's a different acronym for an active shooter kind of scenario. Um, it is... Uh, Avoid, uh, deny, defend, ADD. And so it's kind of, it's a little bit, the, the reason they changed that is um, there's a little bit of a mentality switch um, when it comes to what deny is. Um, if you can lock an active threat by himself, that's called denial. It's either, that's putting some kind of barrier between you and the suspect. Um, there was some event like that that happened uh, at, like a, I think it was a, like a Burger King or something um, in, it was some other country. Long story short, the, uh, the way that the, the people at the Burger King, the, the, the workers defended themselves, they put themselves in the freezer and then they put a bunch of stuff up on the freezer, so like they, they, like they couldn't, the guy couldn't physically could not open the door, and they couldn't shoot through it either. Um, so, so that being said, if an active, if someone were to walk in here and start spraying bullets out, um, this church building, especially the nave in here, this is this is very hard to get out of this. Um, we have an exit that way. We have exit that way. There's no exit that way. No exit that way, right? Um, and so, unfortunately, with the building that we're in, um, that we we need to be concerned about ending the threat before we do any kind of medical care. That's um, that is what TE Triple C dictates. That is uh, that TE Triple C is tactical emergency casualty care. That's basically what I just taught y'all. Um, so if we have someone that's doing something stupid, um, then the threat needs to be ended first. That's number one, um, because it's called stop the dying. We need to end whatever's going on right then and there. So for some of us, that looks like we have a gun on us and we're gonna put six of the chest and one of the head. Um, but if we're working in the nursery and someone comes in through the backside, or we just happen to be the, uh, the usher that day and we're the first person seeing something like that, there are all kinds of things that you can do to um, at least inhibit something like this from happening. Um, so a lot of people think that having a gun is like a quote unquote trump card, or like, or that's like a death ray. But it kind of is, but it's not to as much of a certain extent as people like, the, people who don't have never actually seen other people get shot understand this. You can get shot 14 times and still operate. Um, and so, that being said, um, if someone were to come in here and start doing something like this, um, and some of us are gonna try to shoot them, you can throw stuff at them, you, I mean, whatever, right? Um, there's all kinds of different things that you can do. There was one scenario um, where this, it was this, uh, this elderly lady was the first person that saw this uh, person walking into a building who was gonna shoot the place up, and she threw a fire hydrant at him. 
Um, so she picked a little, she picked a little fire hydrant up. Like it's this little, it's this bit, it's a really funny video. She uh, she takes it, she un, un, un she un um, unhooks the fire hydrant, takes it, swings it with her torso, and uh, and it hits him square in the head. And uh, and so the so some other guy runs up and takes the gun away. It was it was it was really funny. Um, but but you know that being said, you you can do all kinds of stuff to prevent people from attacking the place. But that's number one. Um, if you don't believe, especially if you're sitting up front here, this area of the church, and you don't believe that you're going to be able to get away, um, like if he's coming in from that door right there, and if you're going to come out and he's he's right there, an option is um, something something that I don't leave the house with is um, I've got a knife and on the back end of the knife is something that, I use, that you can use to break a window out. Break that window out and jump. Um, you, you've got to find some kind of way to live, right? Um, unfortunately, like, you know, the 55% of active shooters come, or mass casualty shooter, whatever, come from outside of the, the church congregation. 45 come from inside the church congregation. Someone who's a member or actually goes to the church or something shoots the, their own place up. Um, and so it's kind of wash about if the per. And on top of that, the, per, the people that do things like this don't do them without studying them. Um, the, the covenant shooter, they still haven't released you know all the, the, the crazy writings, but one of the um, things that she had was she had full on, full out maps of the entire school. She knew left and right where everything was, and she knew where she was gonna go. Um, and so, someone who's planning something like this has probably thought about this, you know, where they're gonna come in, and, and so it's, if we're in an event like this, taking that person out is always gonna be number one. Then it's this stuff. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Um, the last thing that I wanted to get at is that blue bag um, is not for, it's this bag. And this will be looking, or looking over here. This blue bag is not for, if we were to have an event like this, this is training material. We've already messed some of the training material up and we've weakened it by putting it on each other. So it's not gonna be very effective if we were to, I mean, God forbid we use all that stuff up. But if we had to, we could, but, um, but this is not going to be for an actual injury. Does anybody understand this? Okay. Um, so, I, I'm not a huge fan of doing what if scenarios. You know, what if someone were to come in the front door, or what if someone? Because really, it's it's the same answer every time. Eliminate the threat. <laughs> Once the threat's gone, you know we can do what we want. Um, but does anybody have any questions as to, you know, we were something like this were to happen? What what things are? What do we need to be doing? Um, just any any questions about an event like this were to happen? Does anybody have any questions they want to ask? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, discussion: um, locking doors, yep. leaving doors unlocked, uh, leaving them unlocked. What do I think? Um, so, I, I, I'm always for locking doors. I'm always for making sure that we're going to be as secure as we can. Um, the the only trepidation I have is if we have someone come in from that door, and then we're wanting to get people out that door. Um, you, you see this all the time. Uh, bank robbers that will, uh, they, should they try to rob a bank and the door doesn't lock, but it's a pull door and they're pushing it and they get stuck. Those, uh, the latches we have at the top, I can 100% see people just trying to push the doors in. They can't because they got the latches up, stuck up top. Um, and that just leads to a bunch of slowdown. But from a, just a security standpoint, it's good to lock everything up. <laughs> 
to keep the whole thing closed up and have somebody, if we need to let people in, have somebody sit out there to just let people in. Um, because we don't, we, we don't want to give the, the enemy the, as many, we don't want to give the enemy any advantages, right? Um, so, Do what? Yeah, there's there, there's locks at the bottom. So. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to like sit here and tell the church what to do. Um, but that, that's kind of what, if we were to keep those locked and then get that locked, I mean, just lock the whole thing up. That's, that's, <laughs> um, that, that'd be what I, what, what I like. Um, but the, when, when we're facing an event like this, um, the, what, what a term that, um, you know, anti-terrorist to, people use is, is what's called building intimidation. And what that means is how defensible is this building, right? Um, do they have a police car sitting outside? Do they have barbed wire around, you know, I'm not telling church, but barbed wire around church. But what, what I'm saying is there, there are ways to make your building appear like less of a target. They're going to try, they're, what, someone who's going to try to hurt you know, a church is probably looking for, um, they're looking for someone believing a certain set of ideas, whether that's, you know, left, right, center, whatever. They hate whatever ideas that those are, and they're going to try to find whatever congregation is the easiest to attack. Um, so our goal is to just not be the easiest. Um, the good thing is, we, we have our, the good thing is, we fill out our church parking lot whenever we're here. And so, um, one of the things that I saw, um, we had, like, I think we had the Hamilton County come by and do, like, a building security thing, um, is that those, what I've been concerned about, because I've seen it more than once, is someone driving a car through our glass doors. Um, so, putting up some kind of concrete barricade, <coughs> so, because that's what happened at July 16th, um, the, they, didn't, they didn't have any, any, uh, any barricades up at the naval base. And so they just drew, he just drew the Mustang right through the uh, right through the gates. Um, so we would need I, I, we have steps, so it's good for that door. But I'd like to barricade that. Just put two concrete posts up so that you can't put a car through it. Um, but yeah, because I, I mean the uh, the guy who shot the post office up, he when he wrecked out, he wrecked out. He went. He was going. 105 miles an hour at 153, and then he shot himself in the head, and then he, uh, the car veered off and it went through the nail salon and into the FedEx. No one's going to get up to 105 in the parking lot. Um, at the at a maximum, you're getting about 40. Um, but if we were to put up concrete posts, we're not going to have, uh, we're not, someone's not going to get through those posts. Any other questions? Any questions about medical? Go ahead. I was going to say, one, you do have a question here. Do you see somebody that you don't recognize, or see somebody we had to ask in the church a while back, somebody that's acting suspicious? You know, please don't look at us. We had a person, if you remember, came in, had a backpack on, not been in this church before, came in and sat down. He was kind of fidgety and then he rushed out. Left the backpack in the church. And so one of the ushers went out and talked to a young man, and, and he had come from another part of Tennessee. It was just late. It was one coming to church. There was, you know, it was really nothing. But a lot of people in the church went to the ushers, let them know, and it was handled discreetly and quietly. And people in the church were talking to her too. So if you see somebody like that, grab in the usher just discreetly, and we'll address it. Yeah. And uh, on a side note, one of the things that I do. Uh, as a police officer, is um, I try to. I mean, this is weird saying this. 
I try to know all my sex offenders. And so uh, I try to know the ones that are doing stupid stuff here. And so, yeah, that's, that's why, uh, I, don't, I don't know if y'all knew, that's why Roderick doesn't come here anymore. Is because Roderick um, is, is a sex offender. And so I've seen him do stuff. And so we don't have him at church in service anymore. Um, but, you know, if you see something, and if I recognize somebody, I'm going to say something. If not to Phil, then I'm gonna say something to that person. <laughs> so, um, but also I work. I used to work Hickson, and I currently work Alton Park, and so I don't know everybody out here. So, and this is a big enough city that the same people that there's different people doing different stuff in different parts of town. So, any more questions? Go ahead. Um, so actually that's a good um, thing I, I completely forgot this is my presentation I forgot to say this um, so an adult has a healthy adult has two to four minutes to bleed out from arterial, from arterial hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging if I'm hemorrhaging blood because I'm a 24 year old healthy male I've probably got four minutes if an elderly person, it's more like at two to a minute 30. Um, kids and infants, minute to 30 seconds. Um, so you have got, if, some, if an infant or a, a, a child has arterial hemorrhaging, you've got to address that. Um, otherwise, they're going to die, and you don't want that to happen. So, uh, so that being said, if, if something like this were to happen, and there's kids hit, and there's you hit, kids take priority. Um, so, and then, but we have plenty of medical supplies. It's not like we have one tourniquet and three chest hills and I mean, we have, we have enough. So, um, and that being said, um, liability wise, uh, unless you do something grossly negligent, you're not, you can't get sued in Tennessee for doing a good Samaritan act. So that being said, something grossly negligent would be you put a tourniquet around somebody's neck. Don't do that. I've already told you that. Everyone here's witnessed me telling you don't put a turn around somebody's neck. Please don't do that. Um, but does, you should, so you shouldn't be worried about and cops all the time. Are worried about you know lawsuits, right? We don't. So we don't. But don't be worried about that. If someone gets mad that you put a turn around their leg, it's okay. I'll help you live, right? Um, so yeah. Have any more questions? No? Okay. Um, so I know we had, this is a kind of a hard topic. I've tried to make it a little bit light, but it's never fun talking about someone shooting the place up. Um, could, Phil, would you mind saying a little bit of a, just a, like a closing prayer just for us to, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What if he was the one watching the door and somebody like, just he was standing there with a gun and just, just hanging out? Just odd. Did you grab one of us or are you grabbing one of us? Hmm? Grab one of us. Yeah, did you grab one of us? So if something comes up with a gun, you're going to be No, not even with a gun. Oh, suspicious. And then wanting to come in. Just grab one of us. Yeah, that being said, if someone walks in, if someone does have a gun and you see it and no one's reacting to it immediately, yell gun. Gun, gun, gun. That's that's what all the time. Because then everybody knows what the gun is, right? Um, so yeah. And then if you have a gun and they're about to shoot, you shoot them. <laughs> Goes out saying, but that's what guns are for. Yeah.
So I hate like I, I hate I, I hate what ifs because it's like it, it really depends. Um, but I mean, in all honesty, the first thing you want to do is, is avoid the ADD, right? Um, so yeah, I, I try to get as many kids out and going. And heck, I mean, kid, you may just tell them to go, right? And it doesn't matter where they go, but it's better to be out there than it is to be in the church. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, um, one time we, uh, one of the, we had some event happen. Long story short, there was, there was a bad threat, and uh, this, this woman, like, took two, like, took two or three toddlers and literally just, like, chucked them out the, uh, out the building. It was only 10, 15 feet. I think one of the kids broke their arm. But breaking your arm's a lot better than getting shot. So, um, so that you know, that being said, you break that glass out, you're going to get cut up. But it's a lot better than getting shot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we and and uh, so that being said, um, if an event, so the the two big events that you know we can have are either active shooter or a bomb. Um, we haven't really talked a bunch about like bomb itself. But if we do have a bomb on go off, um, this stuff still applies. If there's holes in people's bodies, you either seal them off if, for the uh, extremities or you pack them. Same thing. The same, the same general knowledge applies. So yeah. Any more questions? Okay. If you have a question you want to come to me after, completely fine. Uh, once again, I'm not some crazy trauma expert. Um, I've had a couple classes and I've responded to a couple events. That's really my experience. And if I don't know the answer, I'll get it, I'll get it for you. So yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Let's, yeah. uh, let's pray if you don't mind. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you um, that ultimately you're in control, that uh, we can plan and we can prepare um, but at the end of the day, we trust our Savior, Jesus Christ, who commands life and death and who has triumphed over death. And so as we uh, think about these things, I pray that we would be sober, um, but not uh, fearful uh, and really just apply what Jared encouraged us to consider this morning, which is that we live ultimately before our Heavenly Father and He cares for us. So give us grace to make wise choices. Uh, give us grace to not be fearful, uh, but circumspect. And I just thank you for the time we've had tonight to consider how to wisely prepare uh, for the worst uh, because we care about our people. So bless us now as we go uh, and give us grace uh, to sleep well tonight uh, even after this event. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sir.